Good evening, everyone. My name is Tanisha Burke, and welcome to our Team Lux Platinum training. Uh, tonight, we're going to be discussing the marketing buying cycle. When I learned about this, it was an eye opener for me. Um, so I'm sure this information is going to help you as well and change your perspective on how you are marketing uh, to your audience, uh, especially on social media. So let's go ahead and get started. Most newbies market with the assumption that everyone is ready to buy, and they're not, right? Newbies also tend to sell what it is instead of what it does. And people don't want to join your team or purchase an ITA. They want the benefits of joining your team or purchasing an ITA. So what do we mean by that? Most newbies market with the assumption that everyone is ready to buy, but they're not. Well, I want you to think about this. Most, most of us are on social media and we're saying, join my team, purchase a travel agency, join my team. And we're just assuming that everybody that's watching, like, duh, you should be joining my team and purchasing an ITA, right? But most people are not ready to do that, right? Most people are really wanting some more information. We also tend to sell what it is. Oh, it's a travel agency. People don't want to purchase a travel agency. What people want are the benefits that come from purchase, purchasing a travel agency. So if you focus your marketing more on what our product does instead of what it is, it's going to be attractive to more people. People, again, they don't wanna join your team, they want the benefits of joining your team. So let's talk about what the benefits are um, what does our product do? Well, just for an example, our products help people not live a boring life. Our product helps people build deeper relationships. Our products help people escape the stresses of everyday life or a stressful job. Our product allows people to experience new adventures and cultures. It allows people to, you know, try new foods, um, expand people's perspective on life. It allows people to learn new skills. So when you're marketing um, our business opportunity, these are the things that you want to talk about. Not join my team, you know, by a travel agency. Not, it's obvious that yes, they can make money, right? Obviously when you join a business, it's, it's about making money. Yes, it's about traveling more, but those two things are obvious. I want you guys to start thinking outside of the box. Sell what our product does, the problem that it solves, as opposed to just trying to get people to join your team. So the marketing buying cycle, this was an eye opener for me. 2% of the people are ready to join your business. That means only 2% woke up this morning and said, hmm, I'm gonna join a business today. Let me go on Facebook and see which business I wanna join. Only 2%. Two, only two but yet we as network marketers, we tend to try to focus on those 2%. Everybody's going after the 2%. Hey, join my team, join my team. Hey, you that woke up this morning and wanted to join a business, right here, join mine, right? Only 2%. 5% of the people will never join your team. They're never going to buy an ITA from you. They're just, it doesn't matter what you say, what you do, right? It's 93% need more information. So when you're marketing this business opportunity, your focus should be on the 93%, not the 2%. And then you're increasing your odds in your favor. So let's talk about this. One to 2% of the people are ready to buy. 5% will never buy no matter what you do. 93% of the people need more information. They may have the problem that your service or opportunity solves, but they need more information before acting. So when you are going live on social media, when you are posting uh, income posts or posts about your business opportunity, you want to lead with the value and you will attract more of the 93% of the people. Attraction marketing 
is information. If you want to repel people from your from joining your team, then scream, you know, to the heavens, join my team, buy my product. That is a turn off to people. You will not attract the people that you want if you're doing that. If anything, you're turning them off and making them not want to follow you. And remember, we want to increase the Facebook algorithm. So you want to engage with more people. You're going after that 93% 93, 93 that's saying, hey, give me some more information. Tell me more. When you give tips, you'll get loads of people reaching out to you and stacking the odds in your favor that more people will take action. Now, big hat versus no hat. This was another eye opener for me. What are big hats? Big hats are people with massive influence who can post all about their products and get engagement. The problem is big hats forget their big hats and teach the no hats the same thing. And of course, it doesn't work for them because they have no influence. So I just realized that um, when this was presented to me, I kind of realized, well, Tanisha, you're kind of a big hat. Not that I'm anything special. However, when before I got started in this business, I was in a health and wellness network marketing business. And because I built that business on social media, I had a huge following of people. And so I had a little bit of influence there. And so the things that I did and a lot of the things that I personally learned on how to market on social media were trial and error. I didn't study the industry. I didn't study, you know, attraction marketing. It was just things that I tried. They worked. So I'm like, well, if it worked for me, it'll work for everybody else who joins with me. And that is not the case. This was an eye opener for me. So everything that I did to attract people on social media may not work for you all if you do not have influence. Does that make sense? So one thing about big hats, they say is big hats can be intellectually lazy, unfortunately, right? Most of the comments that a big hat is gonna get are just from other teammates. So think about that. When you do a post, are you getting more of your teammates responding um, or are you getting more of prospects responding? The other thing is big hats. If you start thinking like a no hat, you will skyrocket your business because marketing psychology applies to everyone. So the biggest takeaway from this is that if you are someone who has influence, you cannot teach that same method to John, the tow truck driver who just joined your business. Who has zero influence it's not going to work the same way so what we're trying to teach here what I'm trying to teach you all is something that is duplicatable for anybody so if you are that person who does have influence I want you to start marketing like someone who does not have influence you want people to say huh well if they could do it I could do it they're nobody special I could do it right that's what you want so the action step, this is what I want all of you to do. I want you to do a Facebook Live using the Facebook Live structure. So step one, you want to engage with at least 20 people before you go live. If you were on, on the training that we did a couple of weeks ago, we talked about this, but commenting, um, posting on other people's um, pages for at least 20 at least 20 people engage with them before you go live. If you do not do that, you might as well not even go live, right? It's the engagement before you go live that increases your Facebook algorithm so that more people will see you go live when you actually do it, okay? So you wanna engage with a minimum of 20 people before you go live. Next, you wanna have your intro. Hi, my name is Tanisha. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you three steps on how to pack an overnight bag. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there, right? And then you're going to share what the content is. Step one, have your bag, <laughs> right? Step two, you know, bring, you know, stuff that doesn't require ironing. I don't know. Step three, 
bring a water bottle. I don't know, just whatever your content is, right? And then you want the call to action, which is the most important thing, your call to action. You want to make it something that's so um, compelling that people are gonna wanna reach out to you. If you want four more ways to pack an overnight bag that will give you 20 outfits, you know, to just fit in an overnight bag, private message me, right? And then after you go live, engage with the people that commented. So if someone liked your Facebook Live video, put a big heart and comment, right? Don't just like, 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 like that they made a comment, engage with them. If someone says, oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Say, I'm, oh, I'm, gl I'm glad you found this helpful. Private message me if um, you want the additional tips, right? So you wanna engage with the people that comment on your live and you want to do that immediately after you finish your live so never say well i'm gonna go live right before bed and then i'll respond to the comments in the morning nope don't do that make sure you have enough time you allow some padding before you go live and some padding after you go live for engagement that is very very important for your face to increase your Facebook algorithm. And then the call to action delay. When they finally inbox you and say, hey, I want those, um, I'm interested in those three additional tips you had about packing an overnight bag, then you can say, no problem. When I get back to my computer, I'll absolutely send you that information. Um, but just curious, do you have a home-based business that you are building now that is allowing you to travel more? Right, that's the call to action delay, is prospecting them and seeing if they're open to your opportunity. So what are, the, some, what are some notes? For the intro, think of a hook. Assume people are super busy and create a curiosity-inducing intro, right? Remember, when people are scrolling through their news feed, they see the videos, but they don't. the sound isn't on until they press it, right? Until they click on it. So you want the title of whatever your live is going to be to be something so compelling that it's going to make people say, oh, what is that about? And can everybody hear me? Can someone post in the comments if you can hear me? Okay, thank you, Martina. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, think of an intro. Again, when people are scrolling through their news feed, they are, oh, let me go back to record, sorry. Oh no, it's recording. Okay, when people are scrolling through their news feed, they see live videos, but they don't hear what the person's saying. They have to actually stop and click on that live feed in order to, hear what the person is talking about. So you wanna make sure that your title um, for your live is something that's gonna make people stop and say, oh, let me click on this live and see what it's about. Do not mention our company name. Do not mention our company name. Don't make the content about IntelliTravel specifically, but on a topic that supports your brand. Share something else and have it be educational. The viewers should get value, even if they don't take advantage of your call to action. So why don't we want to scream out Planet Marketing and IntelliTravel you know, on our live and on our page? Because you don't want your prospects Googling and researching their own information. If you wanna find something positive about a company, Google them. If you wanna find something negative about a company, Google them. We don't wanna take away the opportunity to have that three-way call or that one-on-one -on -one call with that person. So you don't wanna put the company name out there. We want to create that curiosity so that they want to, that they need to reach out to you to find out what it is that you do, what company you're with, okay? Um, uh, again, the viewers should get that.
All right. Now, um, second, call to action. For this one, keep it congruent to your content. So if you are sharing three tips on how to not gain weight on your next cruise, your call to action should be that you have more tips like that if they want them, right? So you want to tell them in the call to action to private message you. Do not say post more info in the comments if you'd like my three additional tips. Don't do that. Um, we just had a situation earlier today. Someone realized that someone from another network marketing company was friending all of you guys. And then when your prospects were commenting on your post, hey, I want more info, then they were hitting them in the inbox trying to recruit them. So never, 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 and I know this is something I used to, to teach on, but again, when you know better, you do better. Never tell someone to comment on your post if they want more information. Always tell them to private message you if they would like the additional information that you have. Uh, number two, afterwards, if anyone commented on your live, love it, not like it, again, throw down a heart, comment back. If anyone does reach out to you on Messenger, make sure that you're using the call to action delay. Again, you're going to say something like, I'll definitely get those notes over to you as soon as I'm back in front of my computer. But I'm curious, are you currently building a home-based business that would allow you to travel more? Again, we're trying to see if they're open to an opportunity. Um, if they are open to the opportunity, then you say, great. Um, if I send you a quick video, when can, how soon can you watch it? Right? So then we're going to go right ahead and, and, and uh, send, you know, send them the video, set the appointment so we can send them the video. If I send you the video now, how soon can you watch it? Maybe they'll say, oh, well, I can watch it right now. You say, great. And then how about I give you a call back in 20 minutes? What number should I call? Right, so you're setting the appointment right up. If they say, well, I'm already in a business, I sell paparazzi jewelry, then you're gonna say, oh, okay, that's great. Well, let me ask you this. Do you keep your options open in terms of making money outside of selling paparazzi jewelry? Right, they're either looking or they're not. And that's all we wanna know. Are you looking or are you not? Are you open or not? And if they say, no, I am not looking, I am not open, I'm good, I got a lot going on, whatever the case may be, then you're gonna say, no problem. If you uh, come across anyone who is looking to travel more and earn some extra income, please let me know. And by the way, the next time you're planning a trip, give me the opportunity to win your travel business. Plain and simple, right? So if they're interested, we're gonna ask them how soon can they watch a video if you send it. And if they're not interested, we're gonna immediately um, ask for the referral, right? If they don't answer, they don't get the tips, right? So when they private message you, if they're not engaging in conversation with you and answering your questions, then you do not send them the tips. As a reminder, make the description of your live really interesting and curiosity inducing. All right. Questions, questions, any questions? I'm gonna go to the chat feature. All right, so you guys can unmute yourself if you have a question. Maria said, no questions, but great training. Thank you, Maria. Anyone else? Does this make sense to you guys? Any comments? I have a question, Tanisha. Hey, Divorce. Hello. I have somebody that I sent a video to today, and um, um, he watched them, but he said that he has a couple people. He, he has a couple people that's here. And um, when I called him for our, our meeting, our appointment, he didn't answer. But when I, if he does call back, then how should I? What should I say? Or what should I do? Because I don't even think if he's seen it already, he hasn't joined. I don't. I don't almost think. It, I don't know what to do next. 
So I still do a three-way or do I try to figure out where he's at? So great question. So Dvoris' question is she sent someone the information and they responded back that, you know, they had a few friends or something that was in the business. Um, when she called them for the three-way, he didn't answer. So her question is when she does get in touch with him, what does she do? Right? Because he already has people that are in the business. Well, just because he has people that he know or friends that are in the business, that does not mean that they have exposed him to the business. It doesn't mean that they shared the opportunity. He just might be aware that they're in the business. And in this business, it's, you know, whoever shows the plan, that's their prospect. So, mm -hmm. I, would, so I would still move forward with everything, you know, because okay. I've come... I've had some experiences, divorce, where I've spoken to someone and they've told me that their relative was in the business, but their relative never took the time to really explain it. And they ended up joining my team because I took the time to explain it and they realized that, you know, I'm someone who was serious about the business that could help them get what they wanted out of the business. Whereas their relative that's in the business, they're in it, but they're not really working their business. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, some people join the business just because they want to save on their own travel, whereas your prospect, they may be someone who's about making some serious money. They want to build a network. And so they may not have joined with their friends or so or whomever that's in the business because they see that they're not serious with it. Hmm. Okay. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So, so still, still, so reschedule three way uh, with him. Yeah, and still do one. Absolutely, I mean, still reschedule the appointment. Absolutely, until he straight out tells you, well, if I decide to join, I'm joining with my friend Bobby. Then you keep going after him. Okay, that's what I would do. Sounds good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Who else has a question? That was a great question, divorce. Thanks for asking it. Anybody else? Any questions or comments? No? All right. Well, thank you all for joining. As um, soon as this uh, uploads, I will share it in our team group. And uh, see you all again next week. Let's make it a productive week. Thank you, everyone. Bye.